It's one of those red-hot issues, one that really can divide a nation. On one side, it's a basic human right. On the other, it's a perversion, an attack on the most sacred institution of all. I'm talking about gay marriage. Here in Australia, it's banned. Simple as that. There's no way John Howard will allow it. And just last week, his government went a step further by blocking legislation in the ACT to allow civil unions, basically gay marriages in all but name. But behind all the politics, there are ordinary people desperate to be just like everyone else, happily, legally wed. I'm going to ask you to please <coughs> repeat after me. I, Peter. I, Peter. Solemnly declare. Solemnly declare. In Vancouver, no Canada, Peter Furness and Theo Phillips no are taking the candidate. biggest step of their lives. And Peter, could you place the ring on the fourth finger of Theo's left hand? After 13 the years to together, these two Sydney men are getting case. married. That I, Peter? Do take you, Theo. Do take you, Theo. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. Now, the next Peter and Theo are among a growing number of gay couples now travelling overseas to tie the knot. In Canada, it's legal. And even though this marriage isn't recognised in Australia, they believe it's the symbolism that counts. Now, by the authority vested in me by the province of British Columbia, I declare you lawfully married. Yeah. You may kiss. <laughs> as much as any two people can be committed to each other for the rest of their lives, uh, we are, and, and that's what marriage is about. The problem is your marriage means absolutely nothing in Australia. Um, legally, by law, but... To, to us, to our friends, to our family, and to a lot of people out there. It, it symbolises that our relationship is strong and it's as good as anybody else's. Two years ago, the Howard government took the dramatic step of actually banning gay marriage in Australia. It was a move at odds with many other countries that are liberalising their marriage laws. Canada, Spain, Belgium, the Netherlands, even some parts of America all allow same-sex marriage. But here, the traditional view of marriage prevails. The institution of marriage uh, is something which is fundamental to society, it's fundamental to family, and I think we should be holding it up as an ideal and preserving it as that. What is Retired Brigadier Jim Wallace is, is an outspoken campaigner against gay marriage. Do you see gay marriage as a threat to the family unit and society? No, I don't see gay marriage as a threat. Being presumptuous enough to say that we should have a, a uh, relationship endorsed by the state that's put on equal standing with marriage uh, is just ridiculous. It's undemocratic and, uh, and, and it's very presumptuous. Uh, um, my husband and I <laughs> would like to thank you for being with us here this evening, especially Peter's parents, um, Anne and Wall. Peter and Theo have returned home to a country still very much divided over gay marriage. I would just like to introduce Wall, my father-in-law, who is going to say a few words. But they both have supportive families. And while Anne and Wal Furness couldn't make the long and expensive journey to Canada, they insisted on a wedding reception in Sydney. First of all, I would like to really formally welcome Theo into the clan. Thank you. So the mother of the groom, eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can't wipe the smile off your face. <laughs> no, I'm delighted. Really pleased. You all want to see your kids happy. Theo and Peter. Thank you. Do you think people watching you, listening to you speak, and you speak with such love and such pride, would be surprised given that your son has married another man? Some would, some would, I'm sure. Um, but he's our son. Um, we love him and we want to see him happy. And we're very happy with his choice. Hi, Richard. There you go, Good mate. Jim. How are you? Welcome. Good to see you. But Come not on. everyone is singing from the same hymn sheet on the question of gay marriage. Well, but if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, the opposition is largely driven by religious groups 
and Jim Wallace heads one of the most vocal, the Australian Christian lobby. What is your view of the homosexual lifestyle? Uh, I don't uh, agree with the homosexual lifestyle. Um, we see homosexuality as a sin, uh, but I sin daily. We're all sinners. That's why Christ came to save us. So how do you view it? Is it, is it an unhealthy and unnatural existence? Uh, I, I have no doubt and I think it's very hard to argue that uh, a homosexual lifestyle is not unhealthy and unnatural. It is both. Well, I think that's come as pretty much to the, the core of the issue. That these people hate homosexuals, they hate homosexuality. Um, but for us, being gay is natural. This is who we are, this is what we are. No. <laughs> Peter, a sales executive, and Theo, a restaurant manager, are both in their late 30s and have been in gay relationships all their adult lives. They met in a London bar 13 years ago, and the longest they've spent apart since is just five days. I don't mind that, actually. Why did you have to get married? Why couldn't you have just continued to live together as you have for 13 years? We are pro-marriage. You know, and um, for us it was a step that we wanted to go down and take. How did you propose to Theo? I waited till he had a day off work so he'd be in a good mood, um, <laughs> had a good night's sleep. I went and bought him the paper in bed, which only made him suspicious, but I just said it's about time um, that we got married. Why don't we do that? Why don't we go to Canada? And you very quickly said yes. <laughs> It was a big decision to marry in Canada without family and friends. Yeah. So you're planning a honeymoon then? Well, we're coming back here. Oh, really? oh, oh, yeah. That's right for but Peter and Theo were inspired by Australian couple Luke Gahan and Matt Cullerton, who married here last year. Gathered here in the presence of God and in creation to witness the marriage of Luke and Matt. Theirs was a more traditional white wedding with all the trappings. Greet Matthew and Luke, they're married! Did you have a, a traditional wedding waltz or, or song? Or? We did. We did the um, the spousal dance, I guess you'd call yep, it. we did. With uh, My Secret Love by Doris Day. My secret love's no secret. Do you feel like pioneers? Yeah, we do. I, um, I think it's definitely been an experience. It's been, an, albeit a very positive one, but uh, young gay guys being married, it's you know certainly unheard of. So we've pioneers for sure. Yep. Matt and Luke are now living in self-imposed right exile away. in Canada, where they feel much more accepted than back home. Like and they say they'll stay, stay here until Australia recognises their marriage. We have more rights as tourists in Canada than we do as citizens of our own country and that hurts when your own country gives you less rights than a, a country we're visiting. Come on. Come on. In this debate, support for the gay community has come from some unlikely quarters and perhaps none more unlikely than Liberal politician Warren Ench, a man who proudly declares himself 100% heterosexual. I don't see myself as an advocate. I don't see myself as promoting a particular lifestyle, but I see a minority of individuals that are being treated as second-class citizens, and I don't think it's fair. Ench hails from conservative far north Queensland. This part-time cattle farmer and one-time crocodile trapper has made a defiant stand for gay rights in the Howard government. We've got, you know, cemeteries littered, littered with the graves of people that have never been able to come to terms with their sexuality, or worse still, have tried to come to terms with it, but have been ostracised by family and friends, and worse still, ostracised by governments. Ench doesn't support gay marriage, but he does support civil unions, which gives same-sex couples many of the legal protections of a marriage. These already exist in Tasmania, but an attempt by the ACT government to introduce them was blocked by federal parliament last week. Do you see today that gays will have equal rights in this country, a marriage, in all but name? 
I think marriage is the provocative word here because we now have a law in place which says marriage is heterosexual, okay? I don't have a problem with leaving that in the heterosexual league, but will we come a time when two people can make a commitment to themselves, can show that they are totally interdependent, they love each other, and, and that they are not in any way legally discriminated? The sooner the better. In the past few decades, gay rights have undoubtedly come a long way in this country. But same-sex couples don't have many of the basic legal rights of heterosexual couples. Medicare, tax, property and superannuation laws still don't recognise homosexual relationships. I believe all those things should be resolved, but you do not need to start uh, deconstructing our uh, most important institution, which is marriage, in order to achieve that. Would you accept a civil union in the gay community? Uh, no, I don't, I don't accept civil union because I see the way it's been used by homosexual activists uh, to attack marriage. Now, how far do we take this and where do we, where do we draw the line? One, two, look to the back and front. Now, walk, two, three, four, straight. At the very heart of this debate is the question of what defines a family. And in recent times, perhaps no gay couple has done more to challenge the notion of a traditional family than lesbians Vicky Harding and Jackie Brawl. This is me with my two mums. Even though I've been at school all day, tonight we're going back for the costume parade. Not We've only are they living together as a committed couple, the they are also raising a child. Guys. Ten-year-old Brenna. Lots of smiling. It's changing. I mean, there are plenty of girls with two mums and they're boys with two mums and they've got two dads and some only have one of each. You know, there's there's a whole, there's a, whole, a lot of different people in the world and a lot of different families and they all deserve to be represented. It's play school. You might remember them as the play school mums. That means it's the arched window today. I'm Brenna, that's me in the blue. My mums are taking me and my friend Marin to an amusement park. Two years ago, Vicky and Jackie caused a political storm when they appeared on the ABC Children's program with Brenna. The segment about their unconventional family life was slammed by conservative politicians as political correctness gone mad. There's nothing wrong with challenging traditional family arrangements because there are many, many families that don't, that aren't the traditional sort of nuclear family and they're really successful families. After the parade, I suddenly feel tired. I smile while my mums give me a very big hug and carry me all the way home to bed. Religion, equal rights, love and family. Gay marriage is a highly charged issue and one that will continue to divide the community. In the meantime, people like Peter and Theo will live like a married couple in the hope that one day they can be recognised as a married couple, husband and husband. And I think the question of marriage pushes buttons, if you like. I think it really goes to the very heart of how we as gay people are valued in Australia. You know, the basic institution of marriage that something that most people will just take for granted, they can marry who they like. Well, until we have that right, then, you know, clearly we can't say we're equal Australian citizens.